Now we're gonna go ahead and introduce the concept of signals. Since we understand the save method, using signals might be something you end up doing, especially when you're repeating things over and over again. And of course, in the case of Slugify, that would be a good example of that. And so we actually want to implement this same feature into signals before we go much further. So to do this, we're gonna go ahead and import the signals from django.db.models.signals. We're gonna import the pre-save signal and the post-save signal. Now, before I actually implement them, I will say the documentation for these signals is great, but I'm gonna show you exactly how they work right now. And so these signals are gonna be doing what this is doing, okay? So the first one, let's do a pre-save, as in right before it actually gets saved into the database, we wanna override this right here. So what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna create a method called article pre-save. And what I wanna do is actually pass in keyword arguments and arguments. Now, before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and connect it to the pre-save signals. So pre-save.connect, that signal, and then we want to use the class as the sender. So we pass in sender in here, just like that. I will say there is a receiver function decorator that does the same thing as this. I really like it this way, but to each his own. Now, in this case, we have this function that's gonna be coming through with every pre-save. So that's what this signal does. It's going to connect to this receiver function every time any article instance is saved. So to get the actual arguments that are coming through here, we would do something like this, and I'll just print out pre-save, and then print out the args and keyword args. Now, hopefully you're well aware of what these things mean. If you aren't, definitely check out my 30 days of Python series. Now we can actually implement this identical thing for the post-save signal. So instead of pre, we just change it to post save and everywhere post save is there. And now we'll be able to see what happens on a post save signal and more specifically what's being passed through. So to do this, let's go ahead and make sure our server is running and I'm going to jump in to the admin. Now there's a lot of different places as to where the save method is going to be called. Wherever the save method is called, these will be called as well, including obviously overriding that save method. And so if we go into the admin and just save something in here, what we've got is these items coming through. So of course the pre-save signal does not have any positional arguments, but rather a bunch of keyword arguments, thus this dictionary here. And the post-save signal is the same, except it has one additional value in this dictionary here, which is the field or the flag for whether or not this item was created. So in the documentation, it actually shows you this. So pre-save shows you all of the things and how they're defined. And then post-save also does that as well, including that Boolean value or that flag for whether or not the item was just added to the database. So let's go ahead and implement this save method now inside of the pre-save. Notice that we are doing pre-save here. So in here, we wanna pass in sender and instance. So instance, of course, is the actual instance of whatever the model that's being sent. Sender is the actual model class itself, which we can test out by doing sender and instance. Now, of course, when we actually printed it out before, we can actually see, well, there's an argument for signal, but there's also an argument for sender, and there is the actual class itself. So that's actually pretty cool and will be useful in the future. But now that we've got this instance, we can actually do this same thing here, but of course replacing self with the actual instance. And what do you know? This is now doing the exact same thing as the override save method, which we can verify by commenting out the override save method. Of course, saving the file, going back into the admin. Let's get rid of this right here. Hit save and continue. And yes, sure enough, it is working. Now, of course, this same thing could actually happen down here in this post save. And we gotta remember that post save itself is gonna happen after something is saved. Pre-save is gonna happen before something is saved. So instead of having this none call here, I'm gonna actually bring this back to just being the title itself. And then in here, what I wanna do is add in sender instance and then created. So that created field is important here. And so we'll say if created, then I'm gonna do 
Well, I'm gonna do something different here. I'm gonna go ahead and say, this is my slug. Granted, it's not a good slug, but let's go ahead and take a look at what happens. So I save that, because of course I have to call save on it. Otherwise, since it's after the save, it's not gonna automatically save it again. It's just like this signal here, right? So I have to set it here and then it calls save. And that's what's happening with this pre-save. Post-save, you must call save. And again, the same sort of loop could happen that we discussed before that is and would be recursive if we didn't have a Boolean value like this. So after it's created, if you save it again, it's no longer going to be created. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of these arguments here, these print statements. I'll just have pre-save and post-save. So let's go ahead and try that again. This time I'm gonna remove this. Now the question is, what is gonna be here, right? So if we look at the receiver functions again, we see this right here. Now you might have the intuition that that's gonna be there. So let's take a look. I'll hit save and continue. Wait a minute, it's still hello world. Now that of course is because of this right here, right? I'm actually, actually setting the slug right here. Then I'm calling save yet again, which also means that it's calling the pre-save signal. So this is not working necessarily how you might have intended, but if we change it to be like this, it will change. Now, one of you might call me out and say, hey, wait a minute, did you even create a new instance itself? Well, of course, the answer was no. So let's go ahead and create a new one and see if that does anything. We hit save and continue. Oops, let's make that field, save and continue. And again, it's still working as is. Now, if I actually change it to this and save it, the initial slug should be, this is my slug when I create something new. So we come in here and say, hello world, and leave the slug empty, save and continue. This is my slug, of course, cause of that same condition, very similar to what we talked about before, but now it's just inside of signals. Now, of course, we don't actually want this as my slug at all ever. Uh, instead, what we wanna do is improve this slugify method altogether. We wanna take into account all of the other objects in the database, which means we have to learn about a little bit more about query sets and doing lookups. So let's go ahead and do that right now.